Welcome to the topic of direct volume rendering. Today I'm going to give an overview of volume rendering algorithm. In particular, I want to discuss the optical model used by volume rendering. What is volume rendering? Volume rendering is a method used to visualize 3D data in its entirety. It is done by simulating light transporting through the space. You can imagine volume rendering as a projection method. Every data point in space we project to the screen. Before we project the data point, we are going to convert the numerical value into optical properties such as color and opacity. Images below are examples of volume rendering generated from different scientific data sets. One advantage of volume rendering is that you can look at the entire data without having the need to produce intermediate geometry such as isosurfaces. This slide gives you an overview of volume rendering algorithm. What we try to do is to simulate the light transport through a continuous space. Here, I'm sending an array from the camera, that's the eye, through each of the pixel center. Then I'm going to sample the data from you know, the volume space. I will transfer the data value into optical properties such as card and opacity. And then I'm going to blend those optical properties together to get a single card and opacity and then assign back to the pixel. So this is essentially a ray tracing algorithm. Um, there are so many different ways to implement volume rendering. This is one of the most common methods. So clearly the most important part of volume rendering is to determine how light reaches to the image plane. So to do this, we are assuming that the data, that is the voxel, has contribution to the participating median. And you can imagine the medians are particles. Each of the particles can absorb, emit, and also both absorb and emit light. To calculate how much light can reach the eye, we can use different optical models. For example, we can assume the particle only absorb light. But because the essence of one rendering is to allow us to look at the value of the data. So we probably need to allow the particle to emit the light based on the data value represented by the particle. And finally, a most common method used by one rendering algorithm is to assume the particle can both absorb and emit light. Now let's look at this absorption model. We are assuming the participating media only absorb light. It doesn't emit any light by itself. And uh, so you can imagine they are just a black particles. Um, before we derive the equation, let's look at some assumptions here. So we assume that each particle has an area of A, which equal to pi r squared. So that is, we are assuming the particle's ra the radius is r. We are also assuming that the density of in the particle in the volume is called rho. So you can actually look at the picture in, in the, at the bottom. We have a small cylindrical slab. Inside the slab area has a bunch of particle. Then the thickness of slab we assume is delta s. And the base area is e. So this is our assumption that will allow us to derive an equation for absorption-only optical model. So from the assumption, we can say the following things. Because the base area is E and the thickness is delta S, so you can see that the volume of the cylinder is E times delta S. And then because we know the density, that is the number of particles per unit volume is rho, so we know that within this thin slab, the total number of particles is E times delta S times rho. So that's the first bullet here, sub bullet here. Now, we have this many particles, and we assume particles, they don't occur each other. And because each particle has an area of A, so you can imagine the total area occluded by particle in this thin cylindrical slab is A times the number of particle. So that's A times E times delta S times rho. Now let's move on to the third sub bullet at the bottom. Now uh, because the total area of this cylinder slab is E. So the fraction of occluded area for this cylinder 
slab. Then we simply divide by divide the occluded area caused by the particle, which is the second bullet that give us the a times e times delta s times rho, divide by the total area of the cylinder, which is e. Now after we perform the division, you can you see we cancel e, then we come to the fraction of occluded area for the same slab is a times delta s times rho. Okay, so why do we need this? This is because it, suppose there's light beam coming from behind. How much light is going to be blocked can be approximated by how much area in the thin slab is occluded by the particles we think. And the ratio here is a times delta s times rho. So with the property described here, let's see how can we model this uh, particle absorption. So we know that the fraction of occluded area, that is the fraction of occluded light, is a times delta s times rho. So based on this, we can write a differential equation. So now, assuming I'm sending a beam of light through this cylindrical slab, so I can write down the following equation. So the first term here describe how much light is going to be absorbed after the light being passing through this little cylindrical slab. So we are writing this as a derivative. Here the s is the parameter around the ray. So you can imagine this is describe the position around the ray. When the light ray start, it was zero. And as you increase the distance that the light has traveled, the s value is going to increase. i is the amount of energy that light ray is able to carry. Because the particles here will absorb energy, so as you can imagine, when the light ray coming from the left side of the slab to the right hand side of the slab, the energy is going to be decreased due to occlusion from the particles. So you can see that the di ds tells you the rate of change. And remember we just say the fraction of occluded area or the fraction of the light that will be occluded by this thin slab is a times delta s times rho. So assuming before the light goes through this slab was is, after it passed through the slab, the amount of change, that is how much being occluded, will be the is times a negative sign because it's absorption, times the a times delta s times rho, which is the ratio of the energy being occluded. And because we are talking about derivative, right? So we are going to divide the amount of change by delta s. That's a little step the light goes through this thin slab. And if you perform the division, we can cancel the delta s. And then we are going to get minus a times rho times i. The reason is a function of s for rho and for i is because rho and i which is the density and the energy of the light ray depends on the position and we describe the position by the parameter s. The value of s will increase as the light travels from the background to the image plane. So now we have this equation. Um, the goal is to solve the function i so that we know at any step of the ray we know the energy and when the ray arrives at the image plane, the function i will give us the value that is the color of the pixel. So how do we know the function i? We need to solve this ordinary differential equation. So then let me clean up the equation a little bit and put it into this red box. This is the equation that we need to solve. But uh, since it's not a ODE class, I'm not going to tell you how to solve it. So I will give you the solution directly. So if you solve this ODE, you are going to find out the function i, that is the energy of, of the light ray, after you travel at s distance, starting from the background light being i0. And remember this is absorption only, that is the light is going to be absorbed by the particles in front of it. And the amount of absorption, assuming the light has already traveled at s distance, 
which is an exponential decay. And this term tells you how much the light being absorbed at the point S on the ray. Now let's look at this equation more carefully. Um, again, we have this solution here. And I want you to focus on this, those three terms in the red box. The equation tells us that the amount of light that will be allowed to go through is equal to the initial energy I0 multiplied by exponential decay. Now, how much is decay depends on the density of the particle rho t times the area of the particle, that is A. And I replace rho times A by a single variable called tau. And this tau is typically called extinction coefficient. And this it is related to the density of the particle and also the size of the particle. But we really don't typically model the density and the size directly. So we replace this term by a new variable called tau. And tau is the ex extinction coefficient. This e to the power of minus integral of the extinction coefficient can be seen as a transparency because it tells you how much light is allowed to go through. And this is exactly the intuition behind the transparency. And transparency is the opposite concept of opacity. That is how transparent is equal to 1 minus how opaque. So this whole term of E to the power of minus integral from 0, that is the beginning of light, to the current point, that is S, it will be absorbed by the particle based on the particle's extinction coefficient, which is a property related to the particle, or more precisely in our context, to relate the value related to the value of our data set. Okay, so this is the absorption model. The most important part is the solution at the top black box that involved the initial light energy and also the extinction coefficient tau. So now let's look at the emission only model. In this model, we are using the same cylindrical slab. And we assume particle has an area of A, and also in this little thin slab, the density of the particles is rho. So the difference between this model and the previous absorption only model is that now we assume each particle can glow lights diffusively and the intensity of the glow is C, capital C here. Since the total area of the cylinder is A times E times delta S times rho, that is being occluded by the particle. Now each particle emitting C intensity of light, so the total glow flux, that is how much energy going through the area, is going to be area multiplied by the intensity. So we simply have A times E times delta S times rho. Now we multiply by A value C, that's the intensity. Having this glow flux for this cylinder, now we can divide the amount by the area of the cylinder E, and we are going to get the glow, the energy per unit area. So this is the last bullet. So we get C times A times delta S times rho. Similar to the previous absorption model, our goal is to write a PDE. So previously, we are trying to compute how much light being absorbed. Now in this emission only, we need to compute how much light the particle is going to inject into the ray. That is, to make the ray glow more. So we write down this equation in the red box. The change of the energy, di ds, which is a concept of derivative, is equal to the glow per unit area divided by the small distance delta s. So essentially we have c times a times delta s times rho divided by delta s. We cancel the delta s and then we come to this term which is c times a times rho. Okay, the reason it is a function for c and rho is because again the intensity of the emission and also and the density is 
position dependent. Now, remember in our previous slide, I represent a time row by a variable called tau, which is extinction coefficient. So I can clean up this a little bit to rewrite to c times tau. And then I call this c times tau as g. So we come to a clean differential equation that is di over ds equal to c times tau. So in order for to solve the amount of energy the light is going to carry from behind, we need to have the answer for this ODE. I'm not going to tell you how to solve this ODE. Uh, let me give you the solution. So this is a form very similar to our absorption only model. So I have I as a function of S, that is the energy of the light is going to continue to change from behind until it reaches the image plane. It is a function of S, which is the position of the ray. It is equal to background light, that is original energy carried by the light, plus the contribution from all the particle along the ray. So I assume, because remember we have the GS term, which is equal to C times tau. After we solve this equation, the ODE, you're going to find out the, re the solution equal to a integral of from 0 to s, that is from the background up to the current point in question, of the function g. And I can expand g to c times tau. So when you come to this part of the equation, that is, at every point of the ray, the energy carried by the ray becomes i0, the background light, plus the integral of the particle intensity at the c times the extension coefficient, that is tau. Again, how to count from the ODE to this uh, integral require knowledge in solving ODE, so I, I skip that part, but the important thing is, you know, this is the solution, the one in the, the equation in the black body, the solution to describe the energy of the ray i, and also remember that we only include emission here. We do not consider absorption. This is what I'm going to do next. So now let's look at how we put emission and the absorption together. And this is the most common one rendering optical model used. Each particle will not only block light, it will also contribute to the light. The amount of contribution to the emission depends on the property of the particle. In our case, we are going to use the data values. So the box, the red box at the top, uh, this is just a recap of our differential equation, trying to record how much light is changed along the ray from the behind, from the background to the image plane. The first term here is the emission. So we have an emission intensity C, multiply the coefficient of the extinction. And the second term is absorption. This is why we have a negative sign because the light is going to be absorbed by the particle. Now, uh, because C times tau I use as a G, and then A times rho I represent as tau. So then I can write the equation as G minus tau times I. And uh, we already talked about how do we solve the individual ordinary differential equation. So the box below, the first term is the solution for absorption. So you can see that starting from the initial particle energy I0, as the ray goes to the image plane, the energy is going to be absorbed. And the second term is the contribution from a particle because particle can emit light. So G of S is the emission from the particle, but each 
of the emission from a particle is going to go through decay because the particle in front of it is going to block. Right? So this is why you see there is an exponent e to the power minus integral. And this is, you can imagine that is the decay because properties of the particle in front of the current particle is going to block somehow the energy. Now the image at the bottom is our setup. Just try to remind you, from the background, particle has I0. In common implementation, we don't always have a non-zero value for I0 because we want to only visualize the data, not anything from the behind. But this gives us a complete equation. And the S initial value is going to be 0. Remember I mentioned S is the position of the ray represented by the distance it travels. And then assuming when the ray arrives at the image plane, the S becomes D. So that is the distance between the background and the image plane is capital D. And this is actually why in this function here, in this I, I put a D here because what we are concerned is the final value of the light ray when he reaches the image plane. So this slide just basically put together. Uh, you should go back to our earlier slides if you don't feel that you completely understand. But basically the one rendering optimal model consists of absorption only, emission only. And to implement the bound rendering algorithm, we often use emission plus absorption model. Now I want to look you to think more closely of each of the terms. So as you are learning this material, you need to make sure you understand what each symbol represents. And furthermore, you need to know why the subterms are there. So basically, again, let me just remind you, the I of D calculate the final value of the ray, the energy of it, when you travel D distance. And it is including the background energy going through this exponential decay. Why it decays is because it's tau, because the particle in front of the background has extinction properties. It will absorb. The second term is this integral of contribution of the g function. You need to go through the g at different position along the ray. But whenever a particle emit light, it has to go through again the exponential decay caused by the particle in front of it before the light reach the image plane. So I, I want you to review each of the turns here, making sure that you understand. Important thing to know is e to the minus integral power represent how much light it will be allowed to go through. So typically this is the concept of transparency. And conversely, one minus of that is called opacity because opacity is the reverse concept of transparency. And this g function, you can imagine it is the source of the particle, that is how much energy the particle inject to the scene. And this g function uh, is typically derived from the data value. That is, we do not actually model the intensity of the light C and the extension coefficient tau, we actually just take a data value, perform a table lookup typically, and assign the value to the function of G. Okay, so this actually concludes the lecture of optical model for bound rendering. And this is the analytical model. You can imagine this is our theoretical model, and this is not quite related to our implementation yet because you're going to find out you're actually not going to solve this integral. We have discrete implementation based on the concept of Riemann sum, and I'm going to explain it in detail next. This is probably the most complex lecture so far in this course. So I expect you to go back to this video and also go back to the slides and making sure that you understand every small concept that put together to formulate this equation.